Let me show you my super powerful yet compact solar setup that I use for car camping. There are two solar panels on top that are connected to an isolated lithium battery system which is tucked away in the back corner of the Jeep. I designed it to be used without sacrificing trunk or rear seat space. There are four outputs from the system that provide power when the Jeep engine is off, which is perfect for camping. I can power lights, a fridge to keep food cold, phones and other electronics, even a laptop to do work or watch movies, all to make car camping a little more enjoyable. Come check it out. All right, so the dual battery system lives within the trunk of the Jeep. The reason I created it that way was because I wanted to keep all the normal functionality of the Jeep. I wanted to be able to keep the, the rear seats in and I wanted to be able to use the trunk space, but I also wanted to have the dual battery system um, for all the power that it provides uh, for, for all my electronics and all that when I'm camping. So that way we can have a full sleeping setup like you see here, but we can also have power for laptops, uh, phones, really anything that takes power when the car is off. And also, of course, uh, the fridge, which I'll show you in a bit. The brains of this setup is the DC to DC charger that I bought from Renogy. It connects the solar panels, the house battery, as well as my car and the car battery all together. So that way they can all uh, charge the isolated battery for camping and all the electronics we need. And then uh, it can also charge the uh, car battery as well. The DC to DC charger I bought came with a manual. It has a very nice schematic which I can put up on the screen and that's basically what I followed and it makes it kind of simple to understand. I'll show you through the path of what I did. All right, so it all starts up here with the two 100 watt solar panels. This gives well enough power for the setup. In order to keep it as minimally invasive as possible, we only drilled one hole uh, to get the wires down into the Jeep. But the sides of the panels are actually using uh, silicone as an adhesive to an L bracket. And then the panels go onto the L brackets and connect that way. Um, so that way, that way we only need one hole as opposed to like six or seven or eight. So the solar panels are connected in series and then they go through a hole drilled in the roof with this as protection from the elements. And you can see it snakes. I had it snaked along with the PV wire around and right to here, right down the B pillar. And it uh, actually hides behind the plastic and goes under the rug and pops back out to the system. There's also another set of wires that go from the car battery, which is in the engine block right in front of here, and it goes to the DC to DC charger along the inside under the carpet in the Jeep. There is a hole down there where existing wires from the Jeep go through uh, from the passenger compartment to the engine block, so we use that in order to get our battery um, cables hooked up to the battery here. This is great because when the alternator is charging the car battery, i.e. when the car is driving, as long as the car battery is full, it can now run to the DC to DC charger and charge the house battery as well. So when I'm driving, I'm also charging. So we've got wires from the car battery going to the setup and then we've got wires from the solar panel going to the setup. Uh, everything interlinks at the DC to DC charger and then the third thing connected to that is the battery. For this battery I went for a 100 amp hour Battleborn battery. At the time of sizing all of the components uh, that's just what I went for. To me it was the best choice for long-term use and between the car charging and the solar the battery is almost always full all the time so it allows me to use all the things that I need to use, which I'll show you now. It first goes to a fuse panel and then it breaks off into all the different components for electric that I need. I did not include an inverter in this setup because one, that inverter piece is very big and to me it wasn't necessary because I could just use car charging components that we always use. So I have four 12 volt sockets coming out of the battery box and that's enough for everything that I need. There's two ports in the front and then two back here and the ones back here 
This is the fridge plug, and then this is another um, another USB socket for lights. So I can have lights on all the time. So one of the best advantages of having a dual battery setup is that you can use a car fridge, which is pretty much impractical running on your car battery. So this is great to have all year round. Sometimes I keep it on in the summer all week and you know I never see battery drain and this can keep cold water while I'm at work and all that. So it's great to have and it's great for camping as well. Of course, the best thing is that we can charge phones and anything that needs to be charged from USB. The car doesn't have to be on. It could be charging all night. It doesn't really matter. It's great to know that you can charge anything you need just like at home at night. I also have a display panel here that connects to the DC to DC charger and that allows you to get a bunch of nerdy stats. Uh, but the main one that I use is just the the voltage so you can see you can see the house battery and the starter battery um, the voltage and then you could also see the little battery icon I, that shows you how full the battery is and right now it's still topped up so looks good to me here I have a quad USB output for anything we need to charge and then this is actually a, a high power output USB-C port and that can charge laptops. That way we can watch movies, you can do a bunch of computer work while you're camping and you're off grid. What happened to the people used to live here? Yeah. Alright, it's the next day and I'll show you what it looks like when we're packed up and when the Jeep is in its normal driving mode. So now there'll be more room. I'll show you what the battery system looks like with everything out of the way and with the seats folded up and show you how everything fits really nice into the back corner of the Jeep. This is what the battery system looks like. It's a bunch of pieces of wood cut together to fit to the side of the Jeep. And so you have full trunk space basically. The front of it is angled so that way when, when the seat comes up, it matches perfectly with the back. And that's how it looks. The battery is housed in a battery case and the, this plastic case is uh, screwed into the wood. So it's not really gonna go anywhere. The system itself is mounted in three places. One is to the back seat bolt that goes right into the frame of the Jeep. And so there's an L bracket right here and then it's connected via wood. And then the two other spots are um, one long L bracket again that goes that way towards the back corner of the Jeep and it uses the factory bolts that go right into the hard top that is the back side of the same L bracket and everything sits right underneath the back pillar so it's a nice setup the only thing that sticks out a little bit is this but uh, I guess because of the size of the battery I used there is really no option so that is the dual battery setup I hope you liked it I can show you some pictures of what the inside looks like, but that's probably the, one of the only flaws is that if something goes wrong in the wiring, you probably have to take the entire uh, wood platform off. I think this setup pairs well with maybe a rooftop tent or an outside tent. Uh, it's kind of difficult to use when you're sleeping inside of the Jeep. If you have a fridge, everything needs to be moved from the space that you're sleeping in. We make it work, but in the future, maybe I would put a rooftop tent or something else on top. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for more videos in the future.